So when we got this property, we knew it had a well because there was a well record of it. It showed the depth of the well, it showed all the details of the flow rate and everything, but not where it was on the site. And so we had sort of understood that there was a power meter somewhere that we think was for the well back over on pointing off in the direction that we went. And we kind of walked through, we had to cut our way through a bunch of bramble back in there and stuff. And we found a power meter, it was disabled and it had been sort of abandoned. And with it, a whole bunch of PVC pipe kind of stacked on the ground and everything. So we suspected that was where the well at least power came from, but then we didn't really see a wellhead there or any sign of one that was abandoned, and so we didn't know where to look for the well. So later we were down the hill from here, probably about 50 feet downhill, and we were walking along an old fence line, and that's a pasture that has kind of completely overgrown and everything, so we were sort of cutting our way across this road cut that is, forms that fence line, and we actually stumbled into the well. We found the, we found the well casing and that started to explain some pipe we saw over sitting in the in the field to this side it was pipe that we thought was like drip lines but those drip lines were actually power cords so it was a really big beefy power cord running at some distance i'm guessing from the power down to the well and somebody got into it with an excavator or something because it was all torn up and all spun up and everything so then we kind of knew that that was our well that was how it used to be powered and i'll show you over here where we're going to want to put our tank so this is a pretty decent high point and a place we could put the tanks. It's got a couple things going for it. It's about 55 feet and about 80 yards down to the well from here. Um, just going down the hill here, it's straight downhill into the road and then down to the cabin. So if we trench, it's, it's strictly going to drain and drop. And we've got about 70, so times point, I think it's 413 PSI per foot. We're going to end up with about 30 to 35 PSI, which is marginal, but it's right at what you need for a house supply. Um, because these large trees are here, it'll help kind of shade the tanks. And we'll put in probably a cover over the tanks so the sun's not directly on them to sort of degrade them over time. One other side benefit of this is this little meadow that we're standing in 
is flat and it would be potentially a place a fire truck could pull in. So even if somebody was fighting a wildland fire elsewhere and wanted to use our water, we'll probably have many thousands of gallons here um, staged for the fire department if they want to come in and use it and, and head on out, even if it's not for our place. So this well has been dormant for a bit and we looked in it, it's got still the standing water at the same level. It's about a 200 foot well. And in this video, we're gonna to put together a solar pump and get it pumping water and see what we can find. So the whole goal here, since we're on the Pacific Northwest coast, we don't get a ton of sun, um, but we have enough sun in a, in a low yield well that we can slowly charge a, pump, a tank. And we'll have probably four to 6,000 gallons of storage up there. That's also a requirement for the fire department. And we'll store the water up high and that's gonna act kind of like a battery because we can, every day when the sun comes through, we can pump a little bit more water up there. We should be able to pump when the sun is bright and it's really good, we should be able to pump about seven or 800 gallons a day with the, the system that we're putting in. It'll be much less than that on low days, but we're not out here all the time. So we can build up that water supply and then use it um, gravity fed and not have to worry about any sort of pressure tank or anything. And it'll also be good because even if the grid goes down and there's no power, we still have water pressure. This well system cost about $2,200 and we looked at having a professional well person come out and sort of suss the well and figure it out. And they were looking at bringing out a generator and having to get a truck in here and some other things. And so we're probably actually ahead if we just use the solar supply. Even if we learn something about the water supply that it's not perfect, it's probably cheaper than having somebody professionally come in and do this. So we're gonna put in the solar well today and we'll see how that goes. So I'm gonna try to do this in lifts where I grab stuff for particular parts of this project, pack them up there and get them done, and then keep most of the stuff down here just because it's easier to work down here. I've got power and stuff. I'm gonna use um, just this PVC one inch conduit just to run a conduit between the pump and the uh, pole. So I gotta go get that set up first just as a run so that I can keep my wires under there. There's so many animals walking through here and stuff. I don't want it to puncture the wires or anything. So I'll keep it all tucked in. All right, so we got a pump here and it's gonna have a controller that's gonna be mounted on the pole over here with the solar panels up above. And so I'm gonna um, just stick a little trench across, put in this PVC and a little flexible whip at the end so that we can pull the, wet, pull the pump pretty easily with that flexible part, but then have this buried so that animals walking through here or anything going on doesn't disturb the, the wiring. The wiring's submersible and it's underground rated, but it'd just be nice to be able to pull it through that conduit. All right, with the wellhead pulled open, I can show you kind of what this looks like if you've never seen one. There's an outer casing, this steel part is about 20 feet deep and it goes down and it's cemented in around the edges. So that's, that's kind of the, the, the stable part. Then they drilled a core and they lined it with a piece of PVC that's about 200 feet long. So the first, I think it's 80 feet or something like that, has no perforations in it, it's just a tube. And then beyond that, it's got perforations on the side, little holes, quarter inch holes on the sides and that allows the water to come in. So we're gonna just run our, our pump down into this inner, inner liner, and I've got this um, seal that's gonna sit up on top. It's stainless steel, it's a super nice one. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna loop my flexible hose around and down into my trench that I've, I've, I've dug over to the pole. I'll go up the pole with that conduit and mount the controller up there. So I just needed to I set the lid up here so I can kind of um, loosely put the flexible tubing in, figure out my lengths, and get this thing plumbed in.
one other detail here. I'm going to I'm going to feed a piece of nylon rope through here just as a pull a pull wire. I, you can do that with a vacuum cleaner and it works really easily, but I don't have power out here and don't want to fuss with all that. So since these are short segments, I think I can sort of snake my um, wipe my pull, pull, pull wire through all this as I go and not have to um, bring a bring power out here or anything. So this will just make it easier to pull pull the wire through when I'm done and I'll leave an extra strand of rope in there so that if I ever want to pull another wire because there is a, like a tank full sensor and some other stuff I can add that later on as well. The next step was to sort through all the parts and kind of put together the erector set, which is the mount for the solar panels, which is a bunch of extruded aluminum, a bunch of little hardware, and it's a really nice little kit. It sets up, it allows you to tilt it and rotate it once you get it up on there. Um, it just took a while to sort everything out, figure out what things were what, and get up on the ladder and start putting it together. We've got a few trees that shade things. We figured we'd set the panel up, look at the shade patterns over the year, and remove some of the branches and or trees as needed to get better coverage. So the pump comes with pre-fit with um, pigtails on it, and they've got some bullet connectors on there. So I just need to work on the other side of that, and I figured I'd do this inside here where I've got power outlets and I can use my heat gun for the shrink tubing and stuff like that. Then I can take it out and string it through the conduit and um, get it ready to drop it into the well and test it. All right, we got a beautiful day today to do the next part of this. I'm using the Jeep's little kitchen in the back here as sort of a workbench, which I've never done before, but it's pretty useful. And I've got just a little bit of plumbing to make up. I've got a barb that sits up on top of the pump that will take the three quarter inch poly pipe that goes up the tube. And then I've got some plumbing for the top for the well seal that, that is gonna actually act as the sort of part that protrudes out. These, just, these are stainless and I just have some Teflon tape. I just need to make these up. So I'll get this all stuff prepared here while I've got everything on a workbench and then I can pack it in. All right, well, hopefully I got the right stuff. I will be back for water for testing anyway, but when I always go to the hardware store and do plumbing, I make a deal with the person that checks me out of how many times they're gonna see me each day. And uh, hopefully this is one or two trips. We'll see, I'm gonna head up and see what we get. All right, so hopefully you can see this, the lighting's kind of spotty, but the, um, the, the pipe yesterday, we, we stretched it out and let it kind of re relax a little bit in the warm sun. So that's the, this is 100 feet away from the well, which is down that way. I've got the pipe set up there. And I've got my pump here, pre-spliced and ready to go. And I'm gonna just fit it on here and, and walk the wire out to lay it down. So there's gonna be really four runs of, well, I guess three runs of stuff. There's the poly pipe, which is gonna run down there. There's going to be the um, power wire for the pump that's going to run down there. Actually, four things. Um, then there's going to be the safety rope, which is a polypropylene rope that I'll tie onto the pump here and run down there. And then about six feet up from the pump, I'm going to put in a low water sensor that, so that if the pump draws down the well so much that it's running low on water, it'll turn off the pump, and that's going to sit. So I'm going to put all those things and lay them all out because they're all supposedly about 100 feet long, but we'll see how they all shake out get them all figured out. Then I'll come back and I'll bundle those up and sort of tape them up so that they're all contained. So I got the main pump wire run down and then this is the little sensor that's gonna, it's gonna sit about six feet above the pump. 
and keep track of um, the well level just to make sure that the pump doesn't run dry. So it'll disable the pump if the pump gets, if the well gets low. And since this is a low yield pump, I expect that may happen in the summer. It may draw down a little bit, turn off, there's a timer you set and it'll wait for the pump, the well to recharge and then it'll turn on again. So that's gonna be nice to have. So I'll lay this down and keep it sort of tied in just temporarily here so I can get all this stuff organized. All right, and then the fourth thing to put in is this poly rope and this poly rope I'll tie under the pump. There's little eyelets on the pump. I'll tie that on, make a good knot there, tape that up and then run that all the way up to the top. And it says secure it to a, a good location. And I don't know where that good location is because there's not a lot to grab onto in that well casing, but we'll figure that out on the far side. Okay, now with all this secured, I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm not gonna put the poly tube on for real yet because I'm gonna use a smaller tube as a test tube um, just to make sure this is running before I drop it down the well. But I can go through and button up the rest of the um, wires along the way here. The pump wire, the, the the extended pump wire that they extended that they gave, is sort of a ribbon. It's a flat ribbon, and that got kind of twisted as I spooled it out. So. I'll go through and, and sort of clean that up and I'm going to tie off my knot here so that it's not getting um, stuck on anything and, and is less likely to un unwind because you don't want the safety rope is kind of the last last resort if you were to have everything else fail and we'll put a little bit of slack in the wiring so the wiring's not being strained but you really kind of it's going to be hanging from the pipe and the pipe will stretch a little so we'll give a little bit of a little bit of cushion in there for that. And then I'll just go up the up the wires here about every 10 feet and just tuck things together and, and tape them up so that when we move things around, it's easier to manage. messy but I've got so I've got my pump wire coming all the way down from the pump and I've got my sensor wire going all the way from the pump and I'm gonna want to get those to go let's see I want to come through the bottom of the seal because those are going to be down the hole and, and around this elbow then into this conduit and I've got a pull wire through so I want to get both those threaded through pull them through the conduit and up to the controller and it looks like, I mean, I'm glad I spliced it because the splice for the pump wire is going to end up somewhere inside the conduit. The sensor wire, looks like they gave me quite a bit of sensor wire, so I'm guessing I won't use that. I can use that somewhere else. <clears throat> but now I need to sort of weave these through and kind of get it all put together. I can basically assemble the low end of this pump head, um, or pump seal rather. All right, so now we got our wires so that that can sit and mount down there. So now I can work on the plumbing. So this piece sits on the high side and acts as our our output and then um, the barb on the other side I'll hook up the tubing and then I can hook up the safety wire I can this there's a like I said there's a hole here and there's a hole here I can loosen this up get the safety wire hooked up all right with the well seal side all buttoned up I'm gonna turn my attention to the controller side here and I'm gonna I don't really have a waterproofing scheme for the top of this tube and that'll just slowly collect water over time so what I've done is I've threaded on a little um, right angle box that I, I can glue up here and um, that should help it will it'll it'll make it so that it's not just a horizontal surface that the that the water's coming through you'll see what I mean here in a second when I get it weaved on here And it'll give me a little bit of a space to tuck some wire to while I'm working. So tuck that in, glue it on, and then I can move my controller up so that the controller is sort of shielding it and it's also got a, a right angle there. So hopefully that'll help with the water a little bit. Okay, so the there's like a little rubber bit here that um, I'm gonna push the wire through to keep a good seal. 
And so I'm gonna figure out kind of a little bit of excess wire and cut off my main pump power wires. And then I can feed it through that little grommet and it's gonna poke a hole in it. There it goes. I don't know if it's critical, but I'm gonna make sure that I leave a little bit of a droop leg on this so that if I do get water on there, it drips down and out rather than down into the, into the conduit. And I'll probably come back and seal that conduit hole later. And then you squeeze this down and it constricts on those wires and seals them. And I gave myself a little bit of extra in here to work with. So I'm gonna land those on. There's some numbered pump wires here. And when I set it up, the manual had a smart little spot that had you record what color was what so that you know which ones one, two, and three are. So I seem to crimp the, or strip those and check my manual because I don't remember. So black is number one. All right, and then my signal wire. This one has no polarity, so it doesn't really matter which wire you run to what. So I'll just cut myself a little extra here and hook it up. All right, and then since we don't have a tank yet, but we are gonna use a tank high sensor, I'm gonna just go ahead and hook this up. We'll test it as well, just kind of to make sure everything's working properly with the controller before we get going. And then I'll pull this off and we won't use it um, for a while until we get a tank set up and run, run the wire to it. But it's good to test it now because I've got the controller and it, we just purchased it. So if there's anything wrong with the controller or something, then we at least have tested that functionality. There, so that should be it for the wiring. There's only two controls in here. There's one that's a timer for how long, when the well goes low, how long it waits before it tries to spin up again and go. And then there's also one for the overall speed of the pump. So we'll probably run this pump pretty slow because we don't have a lot of sun and we have a, sl a slow well. And that's where we're gonna use a giant tank to fill it up. So this should, with the exception of that wire, should be ready for testing. So I'm, now I can go and get some buckets of water and we'll give this thing a test before we button everything up. I gotta plug in the, actually when I think about it, I gotta plug in the solar pa panel wiring as well. So I'll get that hooked up first. So solar connectors have gotten pretty easy to work with. I'm just going plus to minus and plus to minus here and they only plug one way so you can't really do it wrong. I'm gonna try to figure out how to, how I'll zip tie them so that they're put away neatly when I do that. So that's about the only consideration when routing these wires. Scarcely need this, uh, we need about two feet of wire, not 20 feet. But if I have to, if this doesn't provide enough solar power to pump the head that we have, we can put in a second pole and then we can bridge across. Um, these poles are pretty inexpensive. This is, this is schedule 40, two inch pipe galvanized and um, a four inch pipe, which would, would support four panels this is quite a bit more expensive. So we went with this one. All right, so that's all ready to land. I won't plug that in until I'm all ready with the pump and get the pump in water just in case it starts running so that I'm not running it dry. But everything else looks like it's ready to go and then I'll have to tuck all this stuff up and zip tie it once we're tested and working. Okay, so I took a piece of poly pipe that we found from the old well, which is just gonna go in a circle, and I think it doesn't have too many holes in it. Um, we'll see. It's just gonna refill this, this tank. I've got the, uh, the well low water sensor in here, so that should be 
sensing that there is water for the well, and then we've got some extra water that we might fill, refill the tank once it gets going. But what we're hoping to see is just this thing circulate, test all the wiring, and then we'll test the sensors. I've also got the tank full sensor, so if I dip this in, it should turn off the pump because that would sort of indicate that the, the tank is full, and that would be for future use. So anyway, we'll go ahead and I've got a towel over the solar panels to kind of diminish the output. I'll plug that into the controller and we can give this thing a try. So these things just plug and there's no way to plug them wrong. So I'm gonna plug them in. And so we should have power now. And then should be able to turn it on and we'll see, we can watch the indicators here and see what I said. So we're showing power. I've got the towel up on there. Oh, my grand reveal is stuck. Okay, so it's turning on the pump and the pump kind of spins up slowly. We're seeing some bubbling, that's kind of exciting. I've got the pump turned down fairly slow too. There it goes, it just kicked in. So we've got a, a, a sign over here it's saying low power. And it's just like it may, it may have just rebooted, we'll see. That could be just that the panels are just slightly covered right now. Another green light just went on. That's the pump. Now it's going. And I can feel it just just slightly vibrating. It's speeding up as it as it gets going here. I can hear it too. Yeah. There it goes. Wow. All right, pretty cool. We're pumping water. That's so exciting. <laughs> and now we'll see that. Now this is the the well sensor, so this should this should turn it off. It takes a minute for it to turn it off. There it goes. So this pump, because you don't want to twist the pump in the well, it moves, it speeds up and slows down slowly so it doesn't torque anything. But we've got, a, not a fault, but it just says well is low. So now if I drop this back in, it has a timer so it won't go immediately, but it will kick back on. You can see the indicators on this thing. Right now, I think it's in its timeout interval because you've got a well, a well low light blinking. And so that should, it's basically essentially waiting for the well to recharge and then it's gonna turn back on. Okay, so we waited for the timeout. It actually took quite a while, so we, you can turn it down and up, but Karen's gonna lift it out and we'll watch the water here. Um, I'm gonna drop the, tank full sensor in and this should also shut it off and I think it's the same delay and there it goes it's turning off and like I said it's a slow start and a slow slow stop but seems to be working well and then I think I've got the delay turned down really short so when I pull this out it may take um, a few minutes but it, it's gonna be a lot quicker than it was to come back on so if everything testing and working well, we could go ahead and put the, the poly pipe on permanently and get it fixed, taped up, and really ready to go, and then remount the sensor, because we had to pull the sensor off to do the test. So get the sensor taped back up and button everything up on the low end of the pump head. We then labeled the wires on the outside of the case just so that a future user could see what those wires are. Cleaned up some of the hose clamps that were holding it together, buttoned up the other 
parts of the wiring and tucked everything in. All right, so we have everything all set. We've got the pump seal side all done and ready to go. We're gonna just add, there's an ex excess piece of um, pole wire or, or safety rope that I'm just gonna drop down the sleeve just so it's in there in case we ever need to use it to pull it out. It goes out 50 feet, comes back. Our pump's all set up on this end. Everything's taped up. I did make sure that the poly pipe is a little bit shorter than the electrical wire and the safety rope so that the poly pipe is what we want to hang things on and it's going to stretch a little. <clears throat> what we don't want is it hanging on the electrical wires. So I'm going to switch the time lapse here. I'm going to, Karen and I are going to both do this. I'm going to feed um, the pump down in and she's going to kind of walk that down and we don't want to loop the tree because then we'd have to cut the tree out or do something. But we've got a pretty clear path and we'll feed this thing down and get the seal set and then we can uh, fire it up and see what it does. Alright, so I've got this, I just have this this um, plastic nipple on here with a cap just to keep it clean for now. So, here it goes, it's kind of exciting. A little status light show, it's power. And now it says it's about to pump. And they said you can sometimes feel it vibrate. I can hear it gurgling. That's pretty exciting. So we have this set. There's a speed control on the motor and it's set at about half the speed right now. So I think we could turn it up and go faster. All we're gonna do right now is just verify that we can run this for a while, day in and day out. We'll, we'll come back and probably hook a hose on this and run it down and run it a little bit. And that's kind of part one of this, getting this thing up and running and seeing what it looks like. We won't test this water yet um, because we wanna run it for a while. And step two is gonna be to, wall, to follow, there's a black pipe and I'll show you and it goes up to the meadow up above and we're going to try to go about 55 to 60 feet higher than this to put a tank and we'll pump up to that tank and see what we get there but this is pretty cool we're taking sunlight hitting that panel becoming electricity and then it comes over here and it goes down there and converts into mechanical energy and pumps water pressure and we've got fresh water coming out of the ground here that's just super exciting so very cool next step so Part one is that, we got the water in, that's, that's this first video. The second video, we'll take a tank, we've got a 1500 gallon tank that's not being used right now, down kind of by our existing spring fed water supply. We'll, we'll siphon that out, lift it up, put it up here, and trench up to here with the sensor wire and get it charging that tank. That's 1500 gallons, that'll be a much better indication of how quickly can it charge that, does it charge that, like right now I'm talking to you in May, and we just start to get into our dry season now. The well was drilled in August and it had a good 42 foot static water level in August when it was drilled in 1993. And so our hope is that it recharges to that level or thereabouts and that's you know 60 feet um, below that is where our pump is now. So we should be in pretty good shape even in the, in the drier part of the season. Anyway, we'll get that working, make sure that we've got good viable water up on top here. Um, we're kind of going through all the steps to, to rebuild the cabin and so some of that is visiting with the fire department. So we may need to put in the water storage to, to get validated for building the, the site. If not, we may get it by with the 1500 for now and then run our trench line down to the cabin and look at the water pressure down there and kind of validate all that before we put in big tanks. Kind of a testament to how much you can do with solar because we didn't have to bring, we didn't have to cut the road in. We were able to carry everything in my hand and we walked out with just a few hand tools when we were done and we've got a really nice water supply um, just running off the sun. 
it's not going to run continuously at high volume. It's going to run fairly slow periodically throughout the day when there's sun, and then that'll allow our slow well to recharge, and we'll, we'll have our battery, if you will, will be the giant tanks up here that hold the water, both for fire prevention, which is a rule, but also that gives us head pressure and plenty of storage water in case that thing does get dry during the summer occasionally. If you want to watch the further episodes of this or other things about the cabin and the other projects we're doing, please subscribe, ring the little bell to get notifications, and until I see you next, I'll be out building. Thanks for watching.